Ever wonder why you get a notice from your lender every once in a while informing you that your escrow account is short and that to make up for it you'll have a new higher mortgage payment going forward? We get calls from clients all the time about this topic. People don't know why something's changed. Are you stuck with this new number? What's caused the shortage? And is there anything you can do about it? Well, that's what we're talking about today, so stick around. Hey everybody, it's Brad Cox from the Vesta Group of Long and Foster. So, you get a letter in the mail in late December from the Maryland Department of Assessments and Taxation. Maybe you open it, maybe you don't. I mean, it, it shows up during the holidays, your focus is on other things, and hey, doesn't your mortgage company take care of your pra- property taxes anyway? So why is this important right now? Maybe you'll get around to it later. I'm not saying it's a good idea to ignore these notices, just that it happens. Anyway, most people figure out something important has changed when they get a follow-up notice from the company that services their mortgage. The notice lets you know that your escrow account doesn't have enough in it and you're gonna, your payment's going to be going up to cover it. So, okay, now it's real. Your monthly mortgage payment's going up. But why? What happened? Well, every three years, the Maryland Department of Assessments and Taxation, in conjunction with your local county, reassesses your property to determine what your new tax assessment will be. That's not the same as what the property might be worth on the open market, just how the state's planning to determine your property taxes. And don't worry, it's pretty consistent. It almost always goes up. Anyway, after the state finishes their assessment, about a third of the residents in each county get a notice that year. Each municipality is divided into three distinct areas, areas one, two, and three, and each area is reassessed once every three years. So your assessment increases every three years, and that new amount is phased in over the course of the following three years, and then the cycle starts again. So very often when our clients receive these notices, they'll call and ask why their payment just went up. It may not be especially obvious what caused the increase. In addition to tax assessment increases, then sometimes there are homeowners insurance premiums gone up, but the tax assessment seems to account for the lion's share of any escrow shortage. So the next question after why is what can we do about it? What what if you think the new assessed value is too high? Well, that's where the appeals process comes into play. On the back of the appeal notice, you'll notice on the well, on the back of the assessment notice, you'll find a form with the appeal procedure spelled out. When you're an existing homeowner and you receive a new assessment at the end of December, you'll have until early February to file the appeal, within 45 days of the notice date. When you're a new homeowner and you buy your home before June 30th, you can appeal the assessment within 60 days of the purchase for that current year. If you buy after June 30th, then you can appeal for the following year. To file the appeal, you can use the online Real Property Assessment Appeal Form. You'll find that form at https uh, colon slash slash assessmentappeals.dat.maryland.gov forward slash start.aspx. We'll post the link to that in the comments below. Anyway, you'll need a few pieces of information from the new assessment notice. The notice ID and the control number are in the box at the top right of the assessment notice. And when you file the appeal, you'll have three different choices. You can submit an appeal in writing only, meet via a telephone hearing, or meeting with the uh, assessor in person. All else being equal, our experience is that you stand a greater chance for success in having your appeal granted by choosing the hearing by phone or even a greater chance with the in-person meeting. So we definitely recommend the in-person meeting if you can. So when you prepare for your appeal, whether you're in doing that in writing or in person, you're going to need to include some objective evidence that supports your claim that your, your assessment should be lowered. Homeowners should provide a set of comps, at least five, that show previous sales supporting a lower sales price. A good realtor who understands the market can help you determine the best comps to include. You'll want listings and sales information as well as photos for those comps. You should also prepare a chart. Think like an Excel spreadsheet. And in that chart, you should compare all the relevant data points, square footage, 
number of bedrooms, number of bathrooms, lot size, and so on. And you want the comps to be in a similar area and within the last 12 months. In addition to the comps and the chart, if you're a new buyer, you can include a few additional items. The uh, HUD-1 or the Closing Disclosure Settlement Statement and the appraisal from the lender. Those should help to support your argument as well. But here's what assessors won't want to hear. They don't want to hear your grievances about your neighborhood or the fact that your neighbors aren't maintaining their properties or that there's too much trash or rodents or that the grocery store is closing down. None of that emotional stuff. They also won't grant you a successful appeal based on the assessments of similar properties. It doesn't matter if, say, all the other units in your condo are the same size with the same features and your assessment is 20% higher than theirs. In fact, there's case law on this issue. The solution for assessments and taxation may just be to increase all the other assessments to match yours. So unless you want to have all your neighbors hate you, don't try to use the assessment approach. Just stick with the comps. All right, so if you do the appeal, the first level is with the county assessor. You'll also receive an area sales listing worksheet from assessments and taxation before the hearing so you can see what data was used to help determine the new assessment originally. If you're unsuccessful at the assessor level, then you can choose to appeal to the Property Tax Assessment Appeals Board and then even to the Maryland Tax Court. You can also choose to have an attorney represent you at any stage of the appeals process, though most people choose to try the assessor on their own. And we definitely recommend an attorney if you choose to go to the Maryland Tax Court. We don't have any statistics on how many appeals are successful, but enough people are that it can really be worthwhile for you to consider. If you decide you're interested in appealing your assessment, feel free to reach out to us to discuss your options. We'll be happy to help you find the right comps and prepare your case. You can reach me at 410-821-3122 or by email at brad at homesbyvesta.com. And remember, if you like what you saw here today, please like, comment, and share, and subscribe to our Vesta Group TV uh, channel on YouTube. Any questions, just comment or message us directly. We're happy to help. Thanks for watching. Thank you.